Shalom, Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praises, glory, and honor to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai Bahashem, Racha Kudash, double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Salutations, much love and respect to you. I came out there pushing this word out in truth and sincerity. This is your brother Chayan Apash back at you with another video. Um, this video is going to be dealing with uh, the one who made the earth a wilderness. You know, as it says in Isaiah, the 14th chapter. You know, I'm going to get into that a bit, you know, showing you why this uh, this devil has to be taken out of power. You know, he's done too much and he's he's doing too much and he's planning on doing too much. OK, so the Lord is going to have to take him out, you know, and set up a, a righteous rulership. You know, Esau's rulership was only an example of how not to be, you know, how not to be. And when you see people like this with their suits on and they have this, this soft voice and they got a bald face, you know, know that these people, <laughs> this is the look of the devil, okay? Not saying everybody that looks like this is is a, is an Edomite, but this is a, the look of a real devil, okay? That bald face, the suit, you know? Anyways, let me get Isaiah the 14th chapter, and I'll start at verse... Uh, Five, it says, Yahweh hath broken the staff of the wicked and the scepter of the rulers. When is he going to break the staff of the wicked and the scepters of the rulers? Is when he comes back. When Yahweh Shai comes back with a great anger and he takes down these kingdoms. So I'm going to get Job 9, verse 24. This is Job 9 and 24. It says, The earth is given into the hand of the wicked you know so the earth the world was given into the hands of the wicked okay he covered the faces thereof he, he covered the faces of the judges thereof if not where and who is he okay now let's deal with who the wicked is this is malachi 1 and verse 4 it says whereas edom okay so the Edom is the nationality of these so-called white people that you see today. They are Edomites, according to the Bible. Whereas Edom saith, we are impoverished, but we will return and build the desolate places. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, they shall build, but I will throw down. See, all these buildings you see, all these structures you see, these are all going to be thrown down, thrown down when uh, the kingdom of heaven is being a, is, is a going to be a step established excuse me okay and they shall call them them the reason I'm, I'm i'm emphasizing this to show you it's not just speaking about one person it's speaking about a people a nation the border of wickedness okay meaning everywhere that they go everywhere that they inhabit becomes a place of wickedness all right which means they are the wicked all right and the people against whom the Lord hath indignation forever. All right. So these are people that the Lord uh, does not care for. These are people that the Lord hates. You know, it even tells you that in Isaiah, the 34th chapter, it says the people of the Lord's curse, man. OK. And if you read up a little bit, it tells you that uh, Jacob have I loved, but Esau and I and uh, excuse me, Jacob have I loved. And I hated Esau. You understand that? So that's that's hate right there. Now, <clears throat> the fact that he's the wicked is why when Yahweh Shai comes back, right, he's going to be in rulership. Right? He's going to be in rulership. And Yahweh Shai is coming back to target him specifically. All right, is he is, is it only going to be Edomites that's going to be put to death when Yahweh Shai comes back? No, he, Yahweh Shai is going to be putting to death all kinds of people. All right, Israelites included, but the main target is the Edomites. The other people that's getting uh, caught up are, are other people who do not have the mark of exemption on them. You know, which is which goes back to um, Ezekiel. 9 and 4 so this is uh, Isaiah 63 and 1 said who is this that cometh from Edom with dyed garments from Basra this that is glorious in his apparel traveling 
in the greatness of his strength. I that speak in righteousness, mighty to save. This is Yahweh Shai. Okay, it says he's coming from Edom, meaning what? He's coming to do to do work upon the Edomites. You know, and Basra is another word for, for another name for America. Okay, the chief city of the Edomites. <clears throat> Wherefore art thou red in thine apparel, in thy garments like him that treadeth in the wine fat? I have trod in the wine press alone, and of the people there was none with me. For I will tread them in mine anger, and trample them in my fury, and their blood shall be sprinkled upon my garments, and I will stain all my raiment, for the, the day of vengeance is in my heart, and the year of my of my redeemed is coming. And the Lord, he's angry. Alright? He's angry. He's very angry. He's up in the heavens. He's waiting to redeem his elect. Okay? And he's waiting to bring death and destruction upon these people. Okay? And we're going to go down Revelations 14 and 9. Before we even get that, let's get uh, Revelations 11 and verse 18. Just based upon what he said. Or what was read right there in Isaiah the 63rd chapter. This is Revelations 11 and 18. It says, And the nations were angry, and thy wrath is come. Matter of fact, let's, let's go up. Let's go up. Let's go up to Revelations 11 and 15. It says, And the seventh angel sounded, and there were great voices in heaven, saying, The kingdoms of, the, of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord. Why? Because the Lord is going to come and take over this kingdom. All right? And that's why it said that he had, what, many crowns on his head. That represents him taking on all these different uh, nations, starting with the nation of Edom, and of his of his uh, of his Mashiach, and he shall reign forever and ever. And the four and twenty elders, and if we're joint heirs with him, guess what? Whoever uh, is of the elect, Lord willing, I be of that number. If whoever's of the elect is going to be joint heirs with Yahweh Shai forever and ever. Okay. And the four and twenty elders, which sat before the Most High on, on their seats, fell upon their faces and worshipped the Most High, saying, We give we give thee thanks, O Lord, power almighty, which art and wast and art to come, because thou hast taken to thee thy great power and reigned. Right? So this is what the Lord is going to do. He's going to take the power. And the nations were angry, and thy, thy wrath is come. And the time of the dead, that they should be judged, and that thou shouldest re give reward unto thy servants, the prophets. Okay? And the dead is also speaking about these other nations. Okay? You understand? Because those other nations are known as the dead, because they don't have the, the, the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Okay? And that thou shouldest give reward unto thy servants, the prophets. Goes into what? Thy, the day of thy redeemed. Okay. They're going to be redeemed. And to the saints and them that fear thy name. Small and great. And shouldest destroy them which destroy the earth. And this is what Esau has done. Esau has destroyed the earth. Okay. You see, this is what we're getting into. You know, Isaiah the 14th chapter. You know. This is, um. let's continue down. Let's go down. <clears throat> um, all right. Uh, this is Isaiah 14 and 6. It says, He who smote the people in wrath with a continual stroke, he that ruled the nations in anger, is persecuted and none hindereth. The whole earth is at rest. See, the earth is going to be at rest once these devils are taken out. But right now, the earth is is mourning. The earth is crying. The earth is, the earth is coughing and sneezing. It's sick because this devil um, does not care for the earth, nor does, nor does he care for the people. They break forth into singing. Yea, the fir trees rejoice at thee, and the cedars of Lebanon saying, Since thou art laid down, no feller is come up against us. Right? And what's a feller? A feller is someone that cuts down trees. Look up uh, deforestation. Esau is excessive. When it comes to destruction and death and, and pollution, Esau is excessive. When it comes to righteousness, he wants nothing to do with it. Okay? Hell from beneath is moved for thee to meet thee at thy coming it stirreth up the dead for thee even the chief ones of the earth see so we read before that um the dead he coming to he's coming to judge the dead right 
So it said it stir up the dead for thee. Are the dead going to be stirred up? Or is people going to come out of their graves to go and, and, and attack Esau? No. It's speaking about these other nations for World War Three. Okay? Even all the chief ones of the earth, it hath raised up from their throne all the kings of the nations. See, that's what it's speaking of. All they shall speak and say unto thee, Art thou also become weak as we? Art thou become like unto us? Thy pomp is brought down to the grave, and the noise of thy vows, the worm is spread under thee, the worms cover thee. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump down to the 17th verse because that's where the main point is. All right? It says, um, matter of fact, I'll, I'll go up to, uh, to 16. It says, they that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee. This is when Esau is brought down. And consider thee saying, is this the man that made the earth to tremble, that did shake kingdoms? that made the world as a wilderness and destroyed the cities thereof that opened not the house of his prisoners and that's what he did he made the world a wilderness okay now we're going to look up this word wilderness you know um now wilderness well let's look it up I'm gonna, let's look it up we're going to look it up right now okay <clears throat> so let's go up all right, so the word is Madabar, 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 okay, for wilderness, which means, oh, oh, wilderness, desert, south, speech, uh, wilderness, wilderness, okay, pasture, uninhabited land, wilderness, okay, so this is what Esau has done, he's made the world uh, 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 un, uh, certain parts of the world uninhabitable. Okay, he made certain parts of the world uninhabitable. He made certain parts of the world uh, desolate. You know, uh, in multiple ways. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get the etymology of the word wilderness. Okay, now the etymology of the word wilderness is a wild, uninhabited, uncultivated, right? See, when you go into the ancient world, you know, people were farmers and things like that. Now, you have farmers that mass produce for, you know, a whole population. Now, what's happening with the farmers? They're getting rid of the farmers. Okay? You have to remember, these prophecies is, is when Esau's taken down, right? So, now they're getting rid of the farmers. Okay? So, what's going to happen with that land? That land is not going to be used for... Uh, uh, um, farming. Most of that land is not going to be used for farming. What they're trying to do, what Esau is trying to do, he's trying to set up laboratories <laughs> so that he could give you synthetic meat. You see, these are the plans of this devil. Okay? And when all said and done, those farmers are not going to be able to, they're going to be out of business. Alright? And, and Esau is going to come in and, and, and um, or the elites are going to come in and, and buy up all of that. Alright? Which they're doing already. Now it says, uh, wild animal, wild deer, uh, wild. Okay, so you can see it, it goes into what uninhabitable uh, land <clears throat> or uncultivated land. Now, <clears throat> there's going to be multiple multiple things that's going to lead to that, right? When people start to die off, right? And, you know, because there's going to be a lot of uh, dead people coming up, a lot of people that are going to that are going to see death. All right, they're going to see death, and they're going to be um, cities are going to be emptied. You know, scriptures tell you about that. Okay, matter of fact, let me let me get that scripture. So, like I said, there's multiple ways that Esau <clears throat> has made the earth a wilderness. Okay, and it's just going to increase. It's not going to get better. It's just he's just going to make it worse and worse and worse. All right, just like the pollution. This is Second Ezra. I'm gonna read it uh, directly from my phone. Okay, this is Second Ezra, sixteen and verse twenty-eight. It says, "Matter of fact, let's go. Let's start at um. <clears throat> I'll start at verse." 
verse 22. It says, For many of them that dwell upon the earth shall perish of famine, and and the other that escape the hunger shall the sword destroy. Which we're tell we keep we constantly prophesy to you about the famine. We showed you there's a famine coming, man. All right, not just a famine, but when you read Amos the fifth chapter, there's a lot more than just famines coming. The Lord is gonna put hell on every side. He's gonna put death on every side, man. You have to understand that. Matter. <laughs> oh boy, I'm jumping around, man. I don't want to jump around too much. See, this when the spirit comes on you. You know, sometimes you, you jump around. You, you tend to jump around. But um, yeah, the Lord's gonna make it where they can't escape, man. This is um, Amos 5 and 18. It says, Woe unto, unto you that desire uh, the day of the Lord. To what end is it for you? The day of the Lord is darkness and not light, as if a man did flee from a lion and a bear met him, or went into the house and leaned his, his hand on the wall and a serpent bit him. Okay, so meaning what? There's no escape. You ran from a lion, there's a bear. You ran from the bear, there's a serpent. Death is going to be at every corner coming up to these last times, man. Coming up to Jacob's trouble, man. Death is, there's going to be a lot of death, man. You might be the last one left in your whole family. You understand? It says, shall not the day of the Lord be darkness and not light and, e and even, uh, excuse me, even very dark and no brightness in it. Now, let me get back to, um. To, uh, second Ezra's. Right now, it says, "It says, uh, and the and the dead shall be cast out as dung, and there shall be no man to comfort them, for the earth shall be wasted, and the city shall be cast down. There there shall be no man left to till the earth, and to sow it. You understand? Why is there going to be no man left to till the earth? Because there's going to be so much dead people." All right, so what's that going to turn the, the, these places to? It's going to turn them to wildernesses. All right. It says, um, The trees shall give fruit, and who shall gather them? The grapes shall ripen, and who shall tread them? For all places shall be desolate of men, so that one man shall desire to see another and to hear his voice. <laughs> see, so the city is going to be so empty that people are going to be uh, looking to hear another human to speak to another human being that's how empty the cities are going to be why are they empty because people are going to be dead okay see it, it, when, when the lord said this is going to be a time that like has never been the lord meant it the lord meant it he put so much people on the earth just to bring judgment upon them man he put so much billions of people on the earth right now in this time because the, the most people this is the the time where the most people are on the earth at the same time okay the Lord brought all these people on the earth just for the purpose of judgment. Okay, it says, So that one man shall desire to see another and to hear his voice. For of a city there shall be ten left, and two of, a, of the field which shall hide themselves in the thick groves and in the cliffs of the rocks. Imagine if you were, whatever city you're from, imagine you're in New York and LA and there's 20 people left in New York, 40 people left in New York, there's 80 people left in New York. Okay, even when it comes to a place like New York, let's say there's a thousand, let's say there's 2,000, 3,000 people left in New York. That's crazy, man. That's crazy. All right? And then you go to smaller uh, cities and let's say there's, there's, there's 15 people left, 20 people left. That's crazy. But that's how much death is getting ready to come. It says, um, So anyways, <clears throat> now, so, you know, so these are the ways that Esau is, is made and is, is going to continue to make the earth a wilderness. Okay. Now, let's jump to Isaiah, the 24th chapter. And a matter of fact, before I even read this, let me play a couple of these videos that I have here.
Let me play a couple of these videos. I'm going to start with this video. Colorado Mine Company wants permission to dump more potentially toxic chemicals right into the streams that supply your water. And tonight, Denver 7's Lance Hernandez is asking questions about the proposal and specifically what it means for you. Residents I talked with say they understand the value of the good paying jobs the mine provides, but they also understand the value of good quality water. Like, why is this even a discussion? Why is this even a discussion? See, in our kingdom, this is not going to be a discussion. No one's going to discuss, uh, oh, yo, should we put these these chemicals in the water? Okay, what well, do you think? It's, it's ethical? Do you, this, this is not going to be, this is only a discussion under the hands of the wicked, under the hands of these foolish base people. Even the heathen nation, right? If you give some of the, he, the stupidest heathens you could find, if you give them rulership, this will not be something that would be discussed. Only under the Edomite, only under the, the devil. Remember I showed you the guy with the bald face and the suit that was just talking? Only under people like that would this be a discussion and they could act as if they're intellectuals. That's not an intellectual discussion because eventually that water, wherever they put that water, these streams and these rivers and things like that, they're connected to the big, greater bodies of water. Wherever they put that, that this these chemicals is going to end up in the world's a water supply, man. Show you how stupid these devils are, man. Matt Wider works with fish. He's a fishing guide. As I put it, my coworkers, my trout, um, they need clean water. You know, clean water is 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 paramount for any trout to live. He says the mine is beneficial because molybdenum is used to harden steel. The steel that we use in in everyday applications from our cars to our boat trailers. Climax wants molybdenum standards raised from the current 210 parts per billion to 9,000 parts per billion. That's a pretty big jump to see, but as again, I know nothing about it. I couldn't even spell it. Jason Ward says he'd like to learn more about the impact of the metal that's hard to spell. State health officials say it's not a regulated contaminant. They're waiting for results of studies on the impact before making a decision. Denver Water says if the EPA decides to regulate molybdenum, they might have to spend a half billion dollars to expand water treatment plants. Wider, who says there are streams near other mines that don't have any fish, wonders what might happen if more molybdenum is allowed in 10 Mile Creek. It throws that big question mark up. Lance Hernandez, Denver 7. So state health. So so these these people are these show you how stupid these people are, man. All right. Health officials want you to know that as of now, nothing's changed, and a final decision might not come for a couple of years. Oh yeah, that's comforting. I mean, listen, man. This is why, and you people should see. You people have been watching us for a long enough time. You should see why these Edomites got to get out of power. You should see that these are the Edomites, man. All right. And these are also known in the scriptures as the wicked, the man of sin. All right. Now, let's deal with what's happening over there. Um, hold on, give me one second. Let's, let's deal with this. Let's deal with what's happening in Saudi Arabia or what they're planning on doing in Really, I don't believe they're gonna, they're not gonna have time to do this. Okay, they're trying to build all these type of cities. They're not gonna, but it's to show you the mindset of this devil. Okay, this devil basically wants to keep you people, and that's why keep you people stacked upon each other like sardines, right? While they enjoy the earth. Okay, and you're eating synthetic uh, meats and and bugs and things like that. This is what Esau wants to do. This is what Cla uh, Cla uh, Klaus Schwab and these different devils are speaking about. Countless governments and companies have taken a stab at building a city of the future. There's Songdo in South Korea, the Alphabet-funded Keyside Project in Toronto, which was abandoned in May of last year, and both Singapore and Barcelona have tried to modernize with smart sensors. In January of 2021, Saudi Arabia announced plans for its own futuristic city called The Line. Instead of communities sprawling outward from a central location, they would be built vertically and arranged, well, 
in a line, hence the name. Even though the vision for the city stretches 170 kilometers, it would do away with cars entirely and instead be connected by high-speed rail that would travel the entire length in just 20 minutes. And each individual community would be largely self-contained so that almost anything you could need, be it a school, a doctor, or a quick meal, would be only a five-minute walk away. And this reminds me of that movie, uh, Player, Player One or Ready Player One, right? Because they were living... They how they were living, they were living like this. They were stacked on top of each other, like sardines. And then the only fun they would have, or the only living they would be able to do for real was in the uh that virtual headset. You know, which is which is likened unto the, the metaverse. Okay. So this 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 is the world that these elites plan for you. Okay? And this is why they don't they don't care about the earth. They don't care about the earth, they don't care about the people. All right. They want you people to have nothing right to be stacked up as sardine like sardines, have nothing, eat synthetic foods. OK, while they have their little farms and things like that, that they're able to uh, eat from their, their food, their food that they're able to eat from or maybe in their bunkers where they're able to eat from. This is what the elites are trying to do, man. The government says the line will run on 100% clean energy and make extensive use of sensors and AI to manage the city's services. And all of this is supposed to be nestled in the pristine natural landscape of the Tabuk province with minimal impact on the environment. Now the Saudi Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman has revealed grandiose renders of what the city will look like to match the grandiose plans. The line is envisioned as a giant glass and mirrored wall, 170 kilometers long, 200 meters wide, and 500 meters tall. That's taller than the Empire State Building. It would have greenery stretching along the top, an open air ventilation system to help maintain an ideal climate year round, and it would house up to 9 million people. Now, the line is just one part of Saudi Arabia's controversial $500 billion Neo Megacity project. For one, the so called virgin land. That Excuse me, Salakia. Man, this computer. Salakia. Give me a second, man. Satan. That the government is building Neom on is unsurprisingly, not all that virgin. It is the ancestral and current home of many people, including members of the Hawatat tribe who are being forced from their homes for what many see as a vanity project that won't amount to much in reality. Yeah, because do you think these elites of this society are going to be living there with you? No, they're, they're, of course not. You, they, why would they live uh, with the commoners, right, all bunched up together? They're living in palaces right now. Do you think they're going to go live... In, in, in a bunched up little place like that no that's for the that's for the commoners and while the elites are living good but anyways and this is nothing but a, a <clears throat> like it said it told you that there was many different uh, people trying to do this this type of um of um uh, this kind of smart city all right because this is the way of the future this is the way of the future because that's all tied to the motb okay now Let's get um Let's get this one. All right. Feeling hungry? Would you eat a steak grown in a laboratory? Would you take a bite of a cheeseburger made by a scientist? Technology startups and scientists are placing big bets on lab-grown meats. Currently, livestock is responsible for around 15% of the global greenhouse gas emissions. We could see this number rise in the coming decades. And that's all and that's all a scam, that whole greenhouse stuff, that whole uh, carbon footprint, all that nonsense. That's all a scam. All right. So these elites can force you into a uh, slavery. OK, that's it. All right. So they can uh, they can uh, mark everything you do. Mark your steps. As the scriptures say, he marks my steps. Okay, so we can see everything you're doing. All right, you can't do this. You oh, you ate too much beef for the day. You did too too much of that for the day. You did oh, that's too much walking for the day. That's too much because you're breathing too much. That's carbon, right? Because breathing is carbon. So you know that's too much of that. That's too much of that. While on while, while their account, right? On their account, on their uh, credit system is unlimited. 
everything's a they could do whatever they could they can go wherever they need to go they can use as much plane jet fuels as they want to use but you know there's a limit you see and these zombies because the majority of these people these are all zombies all right they don't they don't see they don't have what's wrong with that According to the World Economic Forum, the world population is expected to be close to 10 billion by 2050. That is a lot of mouths to feed. This population boom and rising incomes will cause demand for meat products to rise by as much as 88%. To feed the world's growing demand for meat, we already use around 27% of the world's arable land to raise livestock. We need to find a more sustainable way of satiating this rising demand. One path to the future of sustainable eating could start with lab-grown meats. Not to be confused with plant-based meat alternatives, lab-grown meats are cultured in the lab using cells which were originally derived from live animals. In theory, this cultured meat would use fewer of the planet's resources and no animals need to be slaughtered in the process. Cultured meat might become a regular part of our diets in the coming years, making its way onto the dinner table and appear. Right, and the elites are not going to be eating this garbage. All right, and that's why it says in uh, Ezekiel, the fourth chapter. Let me get that real quick. Okay. <clears throat> you see, so th this is where this devil is going with it. All right, this is uh, Ezekiel 4. <laughs> In verse 9, it says, Take thou also unto thee wheat and barley and beans and lentils and millet and fitches and put them in one vessel. You see, you can apply this, What's what I'm about to read here, you can apply this to what was going on, you know, back then, right? Because they were amongst the Gentiles, they were in captivity and things like this, but uh, they went into captivity. But there's, this doesn't apply more than today. Today is the time when it really applies the most, okay? Because this is the time where we're eating the most defiled foods. It's the most defiled, and it's about to get even more defiled, as you can see what they're trying to do, all right? That mystery meat. Take thou also unto thee wheat and barley and beans and lentils and fill it and pitch it in the fitches and put them in one vessel and make thee bread thereof according to the number of days that thou shalt lie upon thy side. Three hundred and ninety days shalt thou eat thereof. And thy meat which thou shalt eat shall be by weight. Twenty shekels a day from time to time shalt thou eat it. Thou shalt drink also water by measure the sixth part of an hen. From time to time shalt thou drink it going into the famine. And thou shalt eat. It as barley cakes, and thou shalt bake it with dung that cometh out of man. Dung is is uh, is is, is doo, doo all right, that cometh out of man, all right, in their sight. Okay, so he's saying to cook that with, with man's doo, doo right? And the Lord said, even thus shall the children of Israel eat their defiled bread among the Gentiles, whither I will drive them. All right, so what we're eating right now is equivalent to eating uh, doo, doo okay, human doo. -doo. Which um, Ezekiel protested that, and he said, "Please, Lord, you know, you know." Which the Lord knew he was going to protest it, <clears throat> and he um, and he allowed him to to do it with the cow's dung. All right, so, but it was still symbolic to the defilement of the bread, and the true defilement of the bread was the man's dung. That was a true measure of how defiled the bread would be, and and it's and it's in no time has it been more defiled than now. Okay. Now, this is what these this is what these devils are planning on doing. Okay? This is why we're constantly speaking against this. We're constantly bringing out these prophecies because the Lord is going to come back and take this devil out of power and set up a righteous rulership where none of these things will be a conversation. All right? So with that Lord willing that was edifying to the elect, and I'll, I'll say all praises glory and honor to you. Shalom.